Greetings and welcome to Mr. Sean's channel. I'm going to take a little spin on what I usually do and give it a little sh shot at doing some Let's Plays. And the first up is going to be something simple, a visual novel called Love at First Sight. Um, this would be pretty good, a little bit small visual novel, pretty short from what I understand. And uh, I, I picked it up on Steam for pretty cheap. It was on, it was on sale. So I thought I'd figure I'd give it a shot. Looks, looks be pretty good. So let's get into this. That's a big eyeball. <laughs> It's early in the morning. This is the path I always take to get to school. I normally have to hurry, but today, I'm taking it easy. I had a little extra time to get out of the house, which is kind of unusual. You know what? I should probably move myself out of this picture so you can see the text even if you want. There we go. I'm feeling good under the warm morning sunshine and cool morning breeze as I head to school. So it has a nice little art style. I quite enjoy it. I'm not in a hurry, but it still doesn't take long to get to school. The house isn't right next to the school, but it isn't that far away either. Okay. Even if I don't leave as early as I did today, I never have to run to get to school on time or anything. That's why I'm thinking as I change into my school slippers. I absentmindedly climb the stairs, heading to my classroom on the second floor, class 2-2. Two -two. Put my hand on the door to open it. And then, hello, cheerful. <laughs> it can't be. Oh, Maku, good morning. You're here earlier than usual. How I like you. Her loud ear splitting voice makes me. Her loud ear splitting voice shakes me out of my morning days. Ah, good morning, Kimmy. I hope I'm saying that right. I see you're getting a head start on being loud and obnoxious. Ah. Being loud and obnoxious today. Wow. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being energetic. This overly spirited person is Tsunemi Akemi. She's always like this. The kind of person who's always going full throttle from the moment she wakes up until the moment she falls asleep. You're not energetic. You're out of control. But I guess that's what I should be expected from you. But I guess that's what I should be expecting by now. Morning, Tomo. You know, for better than I do, right? Did you have a volume control? Volume up. Morning. I've known Akemi for a long time. And I can say for sure that, no, she doesn't. This is Ochai, Ochiai Tomo, Tomori. He's a zombie in contrast to Akemi's liveliness. But like Akemi, his energy level is constant. His life is all day, every day. I chose the right voice for him then. Yeah, I've known her for a little while, but I'm starting to realize that. You'll get used to it. Bakun, lately you started to treat me as bad as Tomokun. Is this really how you should be treating someone you've only known for two months? Yeah, she is getting a little. Considering how. Look. <clears throat> Considering how annoying you are. Do you really expect me to treat you any differently? <laughs> oh, this guy's harsh. Yeah, I've only known these two for about two months, but I've gone pretty close to them in that time. I'm Fukunaga Mamoru. Two months ago, I had to switch high schools because of my parents' work. Fall's almost over, I transferred in the middle of the season, and because of that, I was a bit of an oddity among the other students. I was really nervous at first, but luckily these two came along and we became friends. Definitely some rocky road friends. That's me, Tomokun. Say something. Well, it seems like you two are getting close. Yeah, thanks to you. Hey, don't ignore me. <laughs> Poor girl. I can say for sure that Tomo is the real reason I am comfortable here now. He doesn't take care of his appearance, and he's not the warmest person you'll ever meet. But he's pretty smart and ultimately a good guy. I learned how dependable he is pretty quickly. Okay? 
Okay, ignore me is not forbidden. You hear me? You might be ignoring her, but I guess I owe a Kemi as well. The fact that she's so annoyingly loud is her only real flaw. I don't know anyone more inspiring than her. Lately, Akemi's been trying to get me to hang out with her and Tobo all the time. The two seem to balance each other out, though it's not a perfect balance by any means. From what I hear, they've been friends since they were kids, though Tobo told me once she's basically been following she's basically just been following me around this whole time. Time for a room. What? First period already? Uh, what? First period today? What's first period today? Come on. <laughs> Jeez. Read, Mr. Sean. Math. Math. Oh, uh, don't worry. Math. Our homework is due today. You did You did do it, right? Did he wink at, is he winking at me right now? Or has he always been closed? I, haven't, I didn't realize we just opened or closed yet. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday I finished with time to spare for a change. I was actually able to do. I was actually able to go to bed early because of that. I said ignore me was forbidden. Hey! Oh, the poor girl. And that's the classroom. More lessons end, and lunch time begins. Hallelujah! Schools last only within seconds, meaning school is actually going very, very fast. Lunch time. Time to eat. We move from our classroom to another. One farther down the hall. We are the only ones in here, and Akemi's thundering voice echoes in the empty classroom. Three of us have been coming to this empty classroom for lunch since I transferred to the school. On the menu for today is Salisbury steak. Awesome! What are you, a kid? Come on, can you eat at least a lower the volume during lunch? Tomo, help me out here. After a moment, Tomo replies. What do you want me to do? Then he sighs and snatches Akemi's chopsticks from her. Hey! Then, as Akemi opens her mouth to protest, Tomo stuffs a piece of salt beef steak into her mouth. <laughs> oh, that's harsh. Mm. Mm. Okay. She seems to have forgotten anything she wanted to say when the food entered her mouth, and she quietly chews it. Oh, poor girl. Her mood improves a moment later, and her expression dissolves into bliss as she chews. She really is an airhead. I'm not her keeper, you know. Could have fooled me. Who else could hold back if that freight train of a girl? You, th you think I can hold back a freight train? Okay, maybe not. Exactly! Hmm. Akemi cries, spewing food everywhere. <laughs> then realizing that what she just did, she hastily closes her mouth and swallows. Good girl. I'm the number one most driftless girl in town. Tsunami Akami-chan. And with that, she goes back to eating her lunch. I guess she can't stay quiet for long, no matter what she's doing. The most cheerfulest girl in town. I don't think you have any competition for that title. No kidding. She's one of our school celebrities. Really? Tobo starts on his own lunch. Seriously? One of? You mean there's more? Yeah. Yeah. Our high school has a lot of unusual students. There's a lot of rumors floating around concerning our school, it seems. Wow, what other kind of celebrities are there? You don't know about any of them? Well, first there's... Tomo takes a quick glance at Kemi, but she seems to be lost in her own food and just paradise. She's not even listening to us anymore. Well, there's a lot of them. If you really want to know, I'll tell you later. You don't want to talk about this in front of Kemi? I guess it's a touch, touchy subject, but I'll make it a point to ask about it later. All done! You ate way too fast. Crap, I better touch any of my food and we're chatting. I should have started my lunch while she had her mouth closed. I'm not going to get any chance now. What were you talking about? I was recounting the epic saga of how you won your fame. He seemed to be really interested in it, so I wanted to hear it. I wanted him to hear it from the source. 
Wait, what? Really? Sure thing, Maku. You want to hear about when I saved the town for the first time with my fantastic powers? What is this? Yet? Is she, is she a full-blown Chinibi or what? I haven't met Tomokun yet, and... No, no, no. I really don't want to hear that. Come on, Tomo. Help me out, bro. A moment ago, you told me to take care of her. Now I'm telling you to do it. I haven't even touched my food yet, so you be her friend for a bit. <laughs> Without a second glance, he starts eating his own lunch in silence. Maku, are you listening? So anyway, my mom, my mom and I got out shopping, and... No, you're the one who needs to listen. How can I get roped into this? And so, for the rest of lunchtime, I got stuck listening to her story while I finished my lunch and gave her the occasional nod. Perfect thing to do. This is the best school ever. It's like over in within minutes. It's awesome. <laughs> huh? Makun? Where's Tomokun? Akemi calls out to me as I'm packing up, packing up my stuff. She rushed out of the classroom right with class in it. And it seems she came back just as quickly. He said he had some things to take care of back to this place and I left a little bit early. What's up? Oh, really? Hmm, well, can you take this to the third year classrooms for me? I promised to return this before the end of the day, but I've got a club meeting I gotta go to, so. She hands me a small paper bag. Feels like it's got a book or something inside it. I sigh. Fine, I'll do it. Thanks a bunch. Give it to a student in class 3 2 named Yai Katashi. I'm counting on you. No sooner does she say that than she disappears once again. She just can't sit still, can she? I suppose it's better. I suppose I better get going, too. No telling how long this Sae person is going to be there for. I finish packing up and head to the classrooms on the third floor. Okay, going up the stairs. I arrive at the third year student's classroom with a chemist package and I look for the person I'm supposed to deliver it to. But some of the other students tell me she stepped out for a bit. It seems she'll be back soon and that I can just wait for her here, but ten minutes passes and she's still nowhere to be found. We wish that one of the other people give it to her and just go home. School's over and most of the students have been at the club activities for a while now. While waiting in the third year classroom, their students file out and the student grounds slowly become devoid of life. The noise of daytime activity has all but disappeared. I feel like I'm in detention. I want to go home already. Giving up, <clears throat> I leave the classroom and turn toward the stairwell. My classroom is on the second floor, so I usually don't spend any time up here. The layouts of the two floors are pretty much identical, but somehow I feel like this is some alternate dimension. And just as I'm about to descend the stairs, I start to hear what I think are sobs coming from nearby. Huh? I figured I was alone and relaxed because of that, but the sudden sobbing catches me off guard and I freeze. I hold my breath and strain my ears. It's not my imagination. Someone nearby is crying softly. Hearing someone crying in an empty school building sounds like the beginning of a horror story. What am I saying? This isn't a horror story. School might be over, but the sun hasn't gone down yet. Finding someone else in the building isn't that strange. Well, I say that, but this situation isn't exactly normal either. The sobbing continues. It sounds like it's coming from the next floor up. It's quiet, but it reverberates off the narrow stairwell walls. It's definitely coming from the floor above me, Well, I didn't realize it until now. But this building only has three floors. The only thing above me is the roof, right? School is over. The door to the roof should be locked by now, but I can still hear the crying, so there's no way it could be coming from there. But if the door is locked, that means the way up is just a dead end. I can't just walk up there to check and claim I happen to walk by. But before I think it through, my curiosity has me turning around and heading back up the stairs. I climb step by step up the stairs as quietly as I can, but I can't help but make a little noise. As I get closer to the source of the sobbing, I begin to hear it more clearly that just one voice. And judging by the sound of it, it's a girl. It feels like I'm climbing up 10 stories, but it only takes a few seconds, and suddenly I'm almost on the landing. I take the last step and turn toward the source of the crying. And in front of me is a girl wearing our school's uniform. She's lying against the door to the roof, sobbing. 
girl hears me walking toward her and starts shivering as she turns her head towards me. Nothing up to this point has been out of, too out of the ordinary. At least until I saw her face. Hello. <laughs> love at first sight or is it love at one sight? I'm not sure, but she's a little cutie. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of a problem here. A lot of bandages everywhere. Huh? Huh? The girl stares at me with her single eye, her face sopping wet from crying. And I don't mean that she's missing an eye. She literally had one giant eye in the middle of her face. Suddenly, she registers that I'm standing in front of her, and she jumps, drawing her limbs into her body. A bit of light reflects off the unwiped tears near her wide open eye. I can tell by the way she's looking at me that she's terrified. She's not the only one, though. Without really understanding what I'm looking at, I stare at her, unmoving, and she does the same. She's wearing her school uniform, but is she really a student here? Wow, what's happened to you? Got grief. You are not girl. Oh my. What happened to you? No matter how many times I blink, a second eye doesn't salute. <laughs> no matter how many times I blink, a second eye doesn't suddenly grow on her face, and I finally realize that what I'm seeing is reality. Cyclops. Faced with this girl who looks like she belongs in a fairy tale, I begin to panic. Strangely, though, I am able to keep my fright from showing. This situation is unreal. I guess my brain just refuses to fully acknowledge it. Uh, I heard her crying and came up to see what was going on. Are you alright? The longer the slides drag on, the harder it becomes to break it. I try to come up with something, anything to say, to force myself out of the stupor, but my mind is completely blank. At this point, anything is better than silence. Um, it seems her mind is just as blank as mine. I work my mouth soundlessly a few times before finally spewing out the first thing that comes to my mind. Do you need something to wipe her face? Her uniform is black, so I can't tell if it's wet from her crying into it. She doesn't have a handkerchief or anything, though. I produce my own handkerchief from my pocket and move to offer it to her. I approach the girl sitting on top of the stairs to give her the handkerchief and once again, she starts shivering in fear. She looks at me at some, like I'm some kind of monster. Am I really that scary? Isn't she the monster here? <clears throat> Thank you. I hold the handkerchief out stiffly for several seconds. Then cautiously, oh so cautiously, she takes the handkerchief and wipes her face. <coughs> Those are the first words she's spoken so far, but her trembling voice is so quiet that I almost don't hear her. Uh, I only transferred to the school about two months ago. I don't think I've seen you around. This is definitely the first time we met, of course. I'm sure that if I had seen her before, her face would have been burned in my mind. There's no way I could forget what I'm seeing now. Oh, god dang. Is that, I don't think that's makeup around her eyes. Definitely, uh... Just having a rough time here. <clears throat> Should I ask her to give a handkerchief back? It's obvious from the way she's looking at me that she's still confused and afraid. We're not going to get anywhere at this rate. You must be during classes since I haven't seen you around before. What grade and class are you in? I'm in class 2-2. Two -two. Class 1-2. Check give me a proper response this time. She really is a student here, I guess. Not a monster or something. Suddenly it hits me that I haven't been sharing the same school. Hell, the same world with this person the entire time. Oh, when you're lower then. Yeah. Conversation grinds to a halt again. <sighs> like that. Can't think of anything else to say. Actually, that's not true. I have a mountain of things to say to her. But all of it has to do with her appearance, and I'm hesitant to bring that up. Time passes, I hurriedly try to think of something to say to fill the silence. What can I say? My mind is totally blank. Every heartbeat seems louder than the last. The panic I thought had subsided wells up inside my mind again. I don't think I'd keep this up. Uh, man, I, I don't know what to say either, because god dang, 
there's some problems here. You just, you just met her, but God dang. Right. I have to get going. Uh, the girl looks like she wants to say more, but without another word, I turn and flee down the stairs. <clears throat> I, heard, I head to the shoe rack, change my clothes, and start rushing home. I walk out for a few seconds after clearing the campus gates, then I pause for a moment and take a deep breath. Jeez. See, that girl didn't follow me or even call after me, so she's probably still sitting at the top of the steps in that desolate stairway. A cool wind is blowing as I walk home, and I gradually regain my composure. My heart is still racing, though. I think I'm going to feel uneasy about what just happened for a long time. I was really surprised. Maybe I still don't fully understand what I saw. I'll have to think about some more. Is it fear? Was I afraid of her? No, there's nothing scary about this little girl, even if she is. Honestly, I can't shake the thought that she might be some kind of monster, but she must have a human high school student, right? She must be a human high school student. <laughs> she must be a human high school student. I was definitely scared out of my wits at first, but I think if she wanted to hurt me, she would have done it. The fact she's beyond harmless, she's as timid as a mouse. But if that's the case, why do I feel uneasy? Is my mind unable to accept that she was only halves when I... No, that's not it. It's not like I was avoiding staring at her or anything. I actually don't think I could have looked away even if I wanted to. Whatever. It's not worth what's going on. The fact that I'm not disgusted by her, after all... <clears throat> the fact that I'm not disgusted by her, after all this, means it was just pure surprise, right? Yeah, I think it's a reasonable conclusion. At any rate, I think it's safe to say anyone who saw her face wouldn't forget it anytime soon. As I'm thinking this over, I finally arrived on a familiar entryway to my house. I was so absorbed in my thoughts, I guess I was an autopilot all the way home. I think that's where we're going to leave it today, too. Uh, definitely uh, about ready to need some water. Got to get a drink. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> I'm sorry for sucking. I think I, I really sucked at the first of it. But uh, hopefully I'm getting a little better. Um, doing voices is going to be interesting. I'm going to try to do some unique voices for them, but uh, at least give a little bit of intonation differences so I'm, I sound different than the main character, uh, Mamoru. So, hope you like this visual novel. Please comment down below what you like. If you like to, please comment if you like other visual novels you want me to give a shot at, um, any suggestions. Please like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, and check out my other videos I have. I get, I'm doing fine. Ooh, I'm planning to do more Let's Plays. Uh, not just visual novels, actual other games. Um, like, say, I bought, bought recently on Steam, I bought Door Kickers, I bought Secret of Monkey Island, World End Economia, um, Velocity Box, Doom. I plan to do several things just to give it a try, see how well I could do at Let's Play. So, check, subscribe to me, please follow me, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.